dot com. It's bike number four chai dot com. Avram Horenstein is with us. How are you? Welcome to JM and the AM. Thank you. May I read some of the material we've been told about your biking situation? Sure. Um, Ariella was a high lifeline client who passed away several years ago. The Horensteins named High Lifeline's music program in her honor. I assume it's a program that goes on in camp? Or is this one that's year round? And, and year round. And, and hospitals and at homes. And that means a music program that where per people come to sing music? Or how does it work? Everything that Everything musicians you can come to the children in hospitals. Um, there are musical events, uh, musical therapy, uh, and of course the music in, at camp. Uh, Roman and his wife, Devara, remained involved with High Lifeline as members, as mentors rather, for other bereaved parents. Devorah just finished medical school. I, I think we heard about this story. So yeah. it got some national attention, right? Apparently. Yeah. <laughs> she finished medical school, a journey inspired by her experience as the mother of a medically compromised child. Avram, you're described as a cycling demon. How does one get to level of demon? At what point <laughs> does that happen? And what do you need to do? How do you qualify for that? Well, it was one time where I, uh, I was 40 miles away from home and my seat cracked. And I biked 40 miles to the bike shop in order to get a new seat. I think that was probably the turning point. <laughs> that's, where they, that's where they dubbed you a demon. I was in the Berkshire Mountains or something at the time. So wh what can you tell us about this personal experience with High Lifeline? I mean, for those who have, yeah. thank God, not experienced it, what is it like having them hold your hand each and every day? Well, certainly most people who, you know, know about Camp Simcha, and it's, you know, it's beautiful to see the children there, but what they don't realize is behind the scenes there are, there are parents that are, you know, in in the intensive care unit and they're you know they're they're 24/7 they're looking after their kids they're hungry they don't necessarily need money they just need you know Assistance. care and so i think it's um you know it's it's just a, it's an amazing thing that they do that most people just don't even realize and it's it's full year long we spent a year and a half in Durham North Carolina where we were at Duke University Medical Center i, I you know I, we basically were there the entire time i don't think we had one hour together um, without being with Ariella, and even there, if I lifeline from the Miami, from the Florida office, were sending gifts, and they came out a few times. So they tracked us around from from Chop in Philadelphia to to Duke, and then you know, unfortunately, after after a year and a half years, Ariella passed away. But um, you know, we after the music program, you know, what we what we discovered, and I guess my wife discovered also, was that. It's one thing to give money, and it's it's nice to do something in the honor of a child. But if you're if you put yourself into it, and if you do something where you know you're physically doing it, whether you're cycling or whether you're whether you're you know um, you know it's a career, somehow it means more, and it, you feel it. Uh, Often people will say the easiest thing to do is write a check, not to minimize the people who are writing checks. Right, it's right. wonderful. <laughs> but uh, we hear exactly what you're saying. Yeah. Um, uh, Ariella was a camper in camp or not? No, she wasn't well enough to be, right. to be in camp. She had an immune disorder, and so she got sick very easily. I was hoping at some point she'd be able to go, but that never happened. In fact, I didn't even know about Camp Semka at the time we were being helped by High Life, and I just assumed that's what High Life Line does. Right, understood. So. Uh, other parents... Uh, Based on what we've been told, you, you speak to other parents and help them through these situations. What about other parents who ride in Bike for a Chai? Are there others like yourself who are riders now? There are some. I, I, at some of the bereavement, uh, you know, we actually, as a group, some of the parents went to uh, Camp Semka during the off-season. And I did. I had mentioned that I was doing this, and I think a few other a few <laughs> of the parents do it. But um, it's, become, it's becoming a popular thing to do. It's, uh, you know, the one th interesting thing about... Um, about the ride is that, you know, for all of the money that's raised and all that, the, it's, a, it's amazing how much people are getting back, not just because they feel great about what they're doing, but there are guys that have lost 100, 150 pounds. There are guys that have had high, high blood pressure. Even my doctor told me, he said he heard what, how much I was riding. He said, your cholesterol is way down. The test came back, my cholesterol is way down. Right. So, you know, cumulatively, all of these riders that are getting healthy, they're benefiting also. All right, and their families will benefit in the long run. Absolutely. Um, and their children. Yeah, earlier we spoke with somebody who was a camper at one point and therefore walks into camp with a completely different perspective, sort of a, you know, I, I know this place better than you guys do. Right. Uh, I was a staff member there as well. When you're a parent and doing this ride, I would assume thoughts are going through your mind that others are not thinking yeah. about during those 180 miles. Yeah. What would you call it? Emotional? It's... Um, well, you know, yeah, it's emotional, sure. You know, when when 
biking is primarily about climbing because you've got ups and downs, but the downs go by pretty fast. Right. So you're pretty much most of the, the time The downs climbing. don't dominate. Huh? No, you're mostly climbing. And as I'm climbing, I'm thinking of the struggle. And, you know, that if you, you climb and you work at it and you grow from it, and it's the same way when you're taking care of a sick child because, you know, on the surface, how could you possibly get through this? But you work and you struggle and, you know, you do what you can and you benefit from it and you get stronger. And that's, uh, you know, that's a power. Well, I think we get stronger from hearing from people like you. Thank you. Uh, I hope a lot of people responded to your plea and have helped uh, you fundraise for the event. Absolutely, they did. And yeah. anybody who wants to uh, look, up, look up Avram Horenstein on the website, they could sponsor you right now if they go to bikeforchai.com. Great. Thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you. A pleasure. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Meeting some amazing people as usual. Miriam Al Wallach is.